All right, hi everybody. Uh, today I will be taking you through the step-by-step -step process of downloading our USB image and how to create a bootable USB thumb drive. Before we start, this tutorial is based on a Windows operating system. You will not need to install any programs. Everything you will be needing is included in the download or available by default in Windows. Uh, you will need a USB thumb drive. We prefer a USB 3.0. Um, here is uh, an example of that. Now, you'll see it's blue inside. Uh, don't worry about the case on the outside and the color of the outside of it. That doesn't matter. But the blue indicates that it's a USB 3. Um, the reason we ask for that is the faster the USB, the better it is for what we're going to do today. It just allows us to um, create the image faster, uh, re-image the PC that you're going to be out in the field doing. So it's best that we get the, the fastest. Now, I'm going to show you an example here, the Amazon, I'm just doing a quick search, and you'll see right here that we can get 16 gigabyte to 32 gigabytes uh, USB 3.0 for about $6 up until about $20. So I would suggest you go with the $6 or $7 one, just make sure that it does have the blue and it says USB 3.0. Um, size is not super important. Um, but it does have to be larger than 16 gigabytes or not below 16 gigabytes. All right. So I've taken the liberty of opening my email client. You'll see the uh, similar email that you've received. And it says right in the center here, download files. Now I'm just going to click on that. And that's a left click. And when I do, it's going to open up my browser. For this test right here, or this example right here, I'm using Chrome. You may use Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, uh, Firefox. That really doesn't matter because the behavior is similar on all of those browsers. So we're going to download the files. Now, you don't have to worry about clicking individual files, even though they're listed below. Once you click download, it will download everything you need. Now, depending on the speed of your Internet, it will either be... 10, 15 minutes, or it could be up to two or three hours, during which time you want to make sure that your computer does not go to sleep. That doesn't mean that the screen can't dim. We just don't want it to turn off. If it happens to turn off during the download process, the file will become corrupt and will not be able to be workable. So let's go ahead and click on this link. And you'll see now up in the uh, screen here in the browser, it's starting to turn and it's going to start to do something. So it says it's waiting for file mail, and you'll see that right here it's begun its download. It's not important right now to select uh, destination drive unless you prefer to. Um, by default, it should go to your Windows download folder, but don't worry. This little arrow right here, we'll use that once it's done, and it'll always take us to that. So we'll just get that to show in Finder. Don't worry, or show in folder. Uh, we'll do that at the end once it's downloaded. You can also see that uh, it's saying for my speed of connection, which is uh, cable connection, uh, 10 minutes to 11 minutes back and forth. Again, depending on the speed of your connection, it can be anywhere from the 10, 12 minutes all the way up to two, three hours, depending on your connection. All right, I'm back and our download is uh, finished here. So we're going to move on to step number two, preparing the files. You will need to be able to locate the file you just finished downloading. Once located, I suggest moving it to your desktop. Now that the file is on your desktop, you will need to unzip the file and we'll do this uh, step by step. So I'm going to go ahead and locate the file. Now, as we talked before, it most likely went to your downloads folder. So I'm going to click on this file folder here and I'm going to click on downloads and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see better but you'll see right here um, and if you're like me you've probably got lots of stuff in your downloads folder don't worry you can easily search for it or sort by uh, the date that it was modified like today's date or the file name in this particular case it's easy I can see filemail.com that's where we downloaded and I can see that it was just uh, downloaded at 304 the next thing I do is check to make sure it's the correct size so you can see it's 9,919 or 9,919,733 kilobytes which is 9 gigabytes so I'm going to go ahead and right click on this folder and I'm going to open the file or uh, open with. Now, depending on uh, what program you have installed or programs you have installed on your computer, um, you can open with 
Windows Explorer, you can win WinZip, you can use WinRAR. In this particular one, I'm going to actually just use uh, WinRAR. So it shows the three files in here, and I'm just going to extract them, and I'm going to choose Desktop. I click OK. And you can see the process is running right now. Um, there's a PDF how to create it. It has the ISO and it will have the final program we need called Rufus to actually uh, create the USB. In the meantime, I want you to take your USB and you're going to find the available port. Again, look for one that's uh, got the blue port or SS on there. Once you find that, insert the uh, USB into that slot. I've already taken the liberty of doing it here on my, my end, so I'm ready to go. Um, if you want to do that now. All right, now that it's uncompressed and it's sitting on our desktop, I'm going to close all these extra windows. And you'll see that the three files that we downloaded have been opened up and ready to go for our use. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Rufus. Rufus is what's used to actually create the USB. It moves the files for us. You'll see the, the user account control or a Windows pop-up. It's going to ask you, do you want to run this? Choose yes. It does not install anything. Um, it runs just as a simple program. Once you close it, it hasn't been installed on your system. Do you want to allow Rufus to check for application updates online? No, it's not necessary. The version that we provided will create the USB key for us. So go ahead, choose no. So this is Rufus. Rufus basically is a program that allows us to create a bootable USB. So that will allow us to boot our computer that you're going to be re-imaging on site uh, to get all the information from the USB because when you're doing it on site, we won't be going into Windows. For now, let's concentrate on Rufus. So you can see the default information is here. It's already selected the USB because we had it in. Um, it's an A data, the same one that I showed you, 20 gigabytes. I don't have to worry about anything that's on it because Rufus will take care of formatting it the exact way. So the easiest way to do this is to grab your file, left click and hold, and drag it in to the actual Rufus. So you'll notice it happened very quickly, but if you play it back, it actually said, okay, I'm gonna use this file, the Minix 06 2020 ISO. It's already decided the partition screen, uh, <coughs> sorry, partition scheme, <laughs> the target system. Uh, it's already created the volume, so it says it's a Minix. So when you take that USB out and you put it in any of the computer, it will say Minix 06 2020, so you know what it is. And it's created the default file size. So the next thing we're going to do is push start. So then you get a Windows nag screen. This is important because if you've got anything on your USB key that you forgot to take off, it will delete it. Now, assuming that you're using a fresh one, we're not going to worry, so I'm going to click OK. Um, if you have stuff on your USB, please take this time to move the files off of it because once you push OK, those files will be gone. So let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that it deleted the partition and it's creating everything it needs. So this will take a couple minutes while it creates the USB, copies all the files it needs. When it's completed, it will actually come up and say finished and the, the cancel button won't be available to you. Now, depending on the speed of your key, this could be fairly quick, like five minutes, or it could take quite a while. Again, it's back to the speed of the USB key for this and the speed of the port that the actual key is in. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, so that took about uh, almost seven minutes to create. And we know it's done because it says ready in the start and everything's there. Um, but we're going to go and check to make sure that the key actually worked properly or has actually got all the files. So we're going to go down to our trusty little folder icon again here. Left click on that. It should open up a window. And there we are. It shows Minix 06 20 20. Click on that and you'll see a series of different folders and stuff like that. Um, it should say boot, drivers, EFI, and that's it.
That is making the USB. You can close all this now and you'll see that it's all gone. I would keep the files just in case we need to send you out again. Um, if not, and it's a one-time use, by all means, you can you know, erase all the files and everything like that. Hope you enjoyed the video and good luck.